Hi, I'm Carissa Grant, the creator and writer of Worthy Chaos Redemption. I'm here to promote my Kickstarter. You can search Worthy Chaos on the Kickstarter campaign, and I'm the only thing that pops up. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook, and we have a website, worthychaoscomics.com, and you're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We're joined today by a returning guest. She's been on the show before, talking about her amazing series, Redemption. When we last spoke to her, we were talking about issues one through four, but now she's on issue seven, which totally blew my mind, which is amazing to see. We are joined by the ever-talented Carissa Grant. How are you doing today? <laughs> Good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Good to have you back on. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. My name is Carissa Grant. I am the writer and creator of Worthy Chaos Redemption. I was a role player for 17 years and I wrote the story with my writing partner and um, it has the entire series has over 100 issues written. So we're working on the series one, um, 50 issues, and we're seven into it. So it might, might take us about seven years. <laughs> issue four to issue seven, that's a big jump in not only content, but in story and everything like that. How did this come about? <laughs> well, it helps that the story is already written. So it's, uh, you know, 50 issues written already. And um, that helps. My artist is super fast because uh, he quit his job to work on this with me. And that helps a lot. Yeah, we just cranked them out. It's October. So Halloween is our one year uh, in comics. So we got seven issues out in one year. That's yeah. Crazy. And this is the last issue in book one. So oh. book two will start uh, January 23rd. The, the, they all connect, but they're just like kind of different environments. Kind of moving it along. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, if you're doing seven issues a year, yeah, seven, seven years in a month, basically. It's, yeah, it's amazing. yeah. So it's the, you know, it's the goal. And um, my artist was upset when I said, oh, you can't, you probably can't do the spinoff. And he's like, why not? I was like, because this is 50 issues for series one. Series two is already 10 issues in. So when series in seven years is done, we're probably going to be a little bit further into series two. Yeah, you probably can't do it. But if he ever figures out how to clone himself, we are more than happy to have him because uh, our spinoff is 45 issues already written and series one and the series two is like five issues into it. When are you going to give a masterclass to George R. R. Martin about how to write a book? <laughs> yeah you know I, I i've been i've been asked that i've also been asked when am i gonna have an rpg for the mm -hmm. game uh, i would have no idea how to set that up now that i've been asked so many times i kind of want to do it <laughs> so we'll see i think it's because i literally just write i mm -hmm. everyone's like oh what's your preparation what, what do you do do you outline do you you know work it out no i don't i don't have that much thought process <laughs> i sit down and i write and i usually do 2,000 to 6,000 words in a sitting. Uh, I think it usually takes me about an hour to do about 2,000 words. That's pretty much it. Um, for those that don't know the story, I write the main story, The I lead the story, and I write everything for the main character, Serafina. She's the angel descendant, supernatural hunter. And my co-writer writes everything for Draven, all the words and speech and thoughts for him. So when you're reading these two characters, they have two completely different personalities. So you get that extra bonus uniqueness to it because we're totally different people. You get to have two points of view uh, from the story. So we work out the story together. We talk about ideas, but we generally don't know what we're writing until we write it. So when I send my co-writer a chapter, they have no idea what's in it. <laughs> Like maybe an inkling idea of like where the direction's going, but generally we just spring it on each other. Like, here you go. Go right. Good times. But, but the collaboration is is pretty amazing. The, the fact that you're going in blind with the, each other's conversations and, and I'm sure, you, like you said, you, you've role played and everything like that for 17 years. So <laughs> to be flexible in your thinking and in terms of your, your actions, especially when it comes to an RPG game, I'm sure that's helped you for your writing process as well, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Everything we, we did, by the time we finished role-playing in two years, we had pretty much the 100 issues written. And since then, we've written another 20, 30. She broke her hand oh. um, three weeks ago. So we're having withdrawals from writing. And I can't write anymore because I'm so ahead. She would have too much to write. So right now, she has like 8.5 thousand 
word chapter to do for the spinoff five for the ending. And then she has 3000 left to do in a series two and another 4,000. The others. So I can't write anymore. Otherwise it would be like hundred thousand words that she has to do. It's, we're having withdrawals. <laughs> Speak your words onto the page and go from there. Like that should I told be. her, I told her that, but she said uh, she has to listen to music when she does it. We're hoping it's a quick recovery, four to six weeks to heal. So we're hoping it's the four because then we only have like two, three more weeks to go. So we're hoping. I've been working on scripts, converting the story to scripts. I think we're I'm up to 19. <laughs> I'm into book three now. So book one is one through seven. Book two is eight through 14. And then book three is 15 through 24. So then I have to go into book four, but I'm still working on book three converting now. So far, so good. Very action packed. So the book is Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Supernatural and Silent Hill and Resident Evil. So I had the pleasure of talking to Carl from that did the Buffy comic book series. Oh, he nice. was a penciler. So did a cover for me for issue nine. And he's working on it now. And he asked me what happens in issue nine. And I was like, oh, let me go get you a list. Let's see. They fight ghosts in the beginning. Then they have to get through giant salamanders that are, you know, blocking this hallway. Then they get attacked by this giant man-eating plant. And then at the end, Serafina is in the shower and gets interrupted by zombies. So she's about to fight the zombies wrapped in a towel. So all that was one issue. <laughs> he did a really cool cover, though. I uh, can't wait to show it. It's Arafina being held upside down by the vines of the man-eating plant. And you have Draven about to throw uh, a flaming dagger. And then you have Anubis and and uh, the hellhound watching from the shadows. And But I'm excited for that. A lot happens in these issues. It's chaotic. That's I have it right in the name. Yeah, it's worthy of chaos. That's, that is for <laughs> sure. I mean, the fact that you have such a long-running series, and truly a long-running series, that we only see inklings of in, uh, in art form is amazing. But how has that helped you as a writer improve yourself? I I'm dyslexic. And when I first started writing, uh, I would write like one lines, like just one line of action. And then it, that would be like pretty much it. So I'd go back and forth between two people writing these one lines and, and practicing and practicing. And then it took like two years before I could do, you know, about 300 words of writing and one sitting. And then it went to 500. And I was like, I'm never going to be able to do the novel air, which is 1000 words. And then uh, somebody talked me into it. And now I went from uh, one line to 6000 words and definitely improved my writing a lot. I don't have any formal training. I just write. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's improved in the way I can structure and the creativity that comes out. I take no credit for it. I just do what's in my head. So it's not really my fault. <laughs> what other aspects of writing do you find difficult? Generally, it's gotten better with technology, but I have a really hard time with spelling. So for a long time, over you know, 15, 17 years... I fortunately, I have these really big words in my head that I know the meanings of. I can't say them or spell them. Uh, I don't know how they got there. But the only thing I could do is dumb down my own writing. So like I have a thesaurus in my head too. So I'm like, all right, this word means this, but what's a word I could probably spell? And then I kind of go from there. So I used to have to dumb down my writing a lot. Now I either use my phone if for the 20% of the time I can pronounce the word, I can use my phone that spells it for me, or I can dumb down the word, put it into Google and look up the word I want. That has helped to, you know, better my writing because I've had to dumb down my writing for like 17 years. It definitely helps to have the technology because I used to, when I was a teenager, I had this little spell checker that my parents got me and the word was not, it could not be found. So it wasn't very helpful to me at all. But Google and Word have helped a lot. Google more. I mean, Word tries, <laughs> but uh, it does not, it does not help as much as I want. Usually the words that are similar are just random words that they make that I don't even know. Like that's not even close, but whatever. Um, but yeah, Google has been my, my friend in writing for a while now. So I got, I got lucky there. Yeah. Clippy probably doesn't interrupt as much as he used to, I'm sure, because of the oh, updated. Is he retired or is he hiding? I haven't seen him in so long. I don't know. I mean, with the updates and the advent of AI technology, maybe he's the the man behind, or the uh, paperclip behind the uh, shadow, so to speak, who knows? <laughs> I see you're trying to write. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was that voice? Yeah, I, I miss Clippy now. I, you know, he was our friend while we were writing. Now we're all alone. I see that you're trying to write a resume. Let me help you with that. No, Clippy, I got it. You're, you're good. Just, just let me close you. You know, see, that's what happened. We took him for granted. We didn't use his help. 
And he's like, screw you, and just left. But yeah, I don't remember actually ever using using Clippy. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure I, I got annoyed when he would pop up. So I probably wasn't the nicest to Clippy that I should have been. But I mean, he just pops out of nowhere. Like you're in the middle of the writing and he's like, oh, use me. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> I was fine before you came along. I got this. Uh-huh. But yeah. A lot of people are going to be watching this thinking, what, what are they talking about? Look it up. Look, look up what is Clippy. <laughs> oh, man, I'm, I'm getting old. Us for it. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm old. <laughs> uh, my husband's eight years younger than me, so he he hasn't watched like a lot of movies or shows or anything. So like we are totally different generational-wise. <laughs> so half the things I say, he's like, what? And I was like, nah, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to get a shirt that says, look it up. Uh, the fact that we, you have an ongoing campaign with your Kickstarter and the fact that this is the first interview that's going to air a couple of days after your Kickstarter started, like last time, you had a lot of amazing products. And what's happening this time around uh, for the campaign? Kickstarter for issue seven is only three weeks away from issue six. Yeah, but I, I took a break over the holidays. So um, people don't have to listen to me uh, in November, December, and I come back in January. So there's that. So I have so much stuff all the time that I have to spread it out. So my Kickstarters don't always have all the merch I have. But because issue seven is the last issue in book one, it's our one year. And also it's an extra large issue. It's 38 pages of uh 80 pound weight glossy paper. So this is not a small book. Price has increased because it's, it's all on me. I couldn't shorten it, but we have really cool stuff. So we have extra plushies. We have uh, the Anubis plushie. We have uh, skeleton bird plushies. Probably going to do the demon up. The zombie merman was sold in the last one. Uh, and then we have this one. Oh. And we're probably going to have our Apollo rat too, which is actually from the spinoff, but everyone loves the rat. So it's going to be on there. <laughs> and the new, new plushie is our plushie hellhound will be available. That'll be the first time this campaign. We also have new statues. We have new 3D statues of Anubis. We're hoping to have the new statue of hellhound, um, Croc the hellhound. But I haven't seen a picture yet, so hopefully it'll be uh, there when you look. We have embroidered uh, Anubis bookmarks. We have wood engraving prints of the cover for the hardcover. By the way, we're working on a hardcover. It's actually done. I just have to um, send it in to get ordered. It's 230 pages, and it has a cover done by DC artist Ken Hunt and colorist uh, Cece De La Cruz from Lady Death Universe. They also did issue four, if you remember. So it's a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. So that's going to hopefully be available in January with the uh, book two. Um, I never ordered from these people before. So I have to order 500. So I'm wondering where I'm going to store all these. And I probably <laughs> should have enough for the rest of my lifetime. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot more merch. Oh, there's also a coloring book. You can get both digital and color uh, printed. We're going to have shirts and hoodies. Looking to get some resin statues and prints done that I'm going to paint. So I used to paint a lot. I used to do clay a lot. So I'm hoping to have some of that stuff available too. So there's going to be a lot. (laughs) There's a lot in this one. Um, But you know what? It's our one year. So I'm super excited. Uh, I don't know how we got seven done in, in one year, but here we are. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say you might have to go seven, 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 and then one. You know, uh, just to keep things even. So yeah. maybe book two needs to be seven issues instead of six. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what? Well, issue book three is ten issues. So, <laughs> uh, and then book four and five are between. Uh, I haven't converted them yet. Our word count is about ten thousand words per issue. So if that's on par with uh, book four and five, it's going to be 12 issues and 15 issues. So we'll see. My artist is like, it's getting longer and longer. It's like, yeah, I don't know. The, the, the issue or the problem is that my artist is phenomenal with panel work. He does a lot of action scenes. Uh, Jonas DaCosta, he's just a master of the panel. And doing that, I have to uh, shorten the panel request because what I'll do is I'll put three to four and he turns them into like six to nine to show you the action. (laughs) And I had one reviewer say, you know, you could do less action. It's not a movie. And I was like, I could, (laughs) but we like the action. It's kind of like a movie comic novel because you have the thought bubbles from the novel. You know, you have the story and the dialogue that's coming from a novel. Uh, You have the comic book, obviously, aspect with the pictures, but you have the movie because of the action shown. No, not going to change it. (laughs) Well, why stifle an amazing artist, you know? Like, 
Yeah, you know, and it's so funny because when we first started on issue two, we argued a lot because, uh, and he's not argumentative people, it is me. I am very argumentative apparently. But we had different visions because I didn't understand. Usually I would just give a script to an artist and they'd, if it says four panels, there's four panels. You know, I'd give him four panels and it would come out to be like nine. And I was like, uh, I don't know what you're doing. So it took some time for me to realize I had to lower my panel count from six to seven to three to four to let him do his, his magic trick. So once I figured that out, it was smooth sailing. We haven't argued since. And he was right. I just didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> and technically he didn't either because it was it's, it was his first paid job. He had never done a uh, comic for pay before and it was different. So we learned as we go. And, and for the, the hardcover, we did a lot of editing on one through three. We redid some panel work, some artwork, and to update them to make them all more consistent. We actually changed the font in, in issue two so that it matches all the rest because that was the first one we did. The hardcover is going to be a little bit different, but it's, you know, it's the, it's the same story, one through seven. And I'm excited to have it in my hand because, you know, I'm, I keep telling myself anyone can make a floppy comic, which isn't necessarily true. But I'm like, anyone can print, you know, a floppy comic. But a hardcover, you know, that's that's something. So I'm excited. Not to say that floppies are not a big deal, obviously. Because <laughs> all my fellow creators have amazing floppies. And yeah. I've spent a fortune on doing these seven. But the hardcover to me is just like such a step up, you know, that I'm just excited to see it and have it in my hand and, and all that stuff. So it better come out right because I'm ordering 500 of them. <laughs> I'm like terrified. That's like such an investment. Yeah. You know, 500 hardcovers. And if it comes wrong, what am I supposed to do? And all that. So, uh, yeah, I'll cross your fingers for me. <laughs> Hopefully the proof uh, comes back good. And then it's like, OK, do it as this and don't change anything. And yeah, that's there, what we're, but... we're hoping. <laughs> Because you have so much content, is this hardcover like a, like a volume one omnibus type deal of the seven issues or is that something down the road you're going to try and accomplish? Like, I'm just trying to think of how you're going to make this into a collection once everything is said and done. So one through seven, which is the hardcover, is book one. Um, right. So each book, it, there's going to be five books uh, total. So there'll be a box set at the end. And we'll probably do, we're not doing it this time, but probably when we release like a box set, we'll probably have like connecting covers. We have a, a set for idea for the spinoff because there's a war going on and it has like Anubis and Hecate and, and heaven and hell and all that stuff. I haven't decided what these would be a connecting cover of. It takes more thought process than I have right now. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. Like I created what a hundred issues plus, but coming up with a cover idea is like torture. It is like torture. I don't know why, because I just, to me, I want to take a scene that was in the book and just and just have it. But generally people want, you know, they do something else for the cover. So I I'm so grateful when the artists are like, can I just do whatever? And I'm like, yes, just <laughs> Carl from, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And he, he's the creator of Frey. He literally read the script, which is very rare. I've never had an artist be like, oh, can I, well, except for mine, but for the cover, like, can I read, you know, part of the script? And I was like, uh, yeah. So he actually took what he read and turned it into a really cool uh, cover. And I'm super excited about to see it colored and finished. And uh, it's going to be my most expensive cover yet, but it's already looking gorgeous. Like he gave me like a rough draft and I was like, I would just print that. Like I was <laughs> like, it looks gorgeous as it is. So I'm excited about that. As, as everyone might know, anyone that's in my Facebook group, uh, Worthy Chaos Redemption, we have about 700 members or anyone that's on my Twitter X, whatever it's called page. I don't know what it's called anymore. We have five points. 3,000 followers on there. Uh, as I know, I have a slight obsession with variant covers and I'm always having a new one to print. I think I have enough variant covers. I set them up to where they need to go and it's pretty much issue 19 and some after that too. Yeah, I have a, I have a lot of covers and they get better as they go. They, some of them are absolutely amazing. And I got really lucky with some of the artists that I have, but they're so addicting. It's just like, I want to see all these different scenarios and I don't have to think. I'm like, here's my money. Make me something cool. And there it is. So magic. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> Art is magic. Man. I think so too. You know, I used to draw for like one year of my life. I did an amazing job of copying whatever I saw. And that was it. I had, I had weirdly no imagination when drawing. Like I could not draw something from my mind. If I see it, I used to draw from the Dungeons and Dragons mm -hmm. uh, manual and they look exactly how they looked in the manual, but who the hell wants that? <laughs> like, it's just like, it doesn't, it was, it was not useful for me at all. And so I stopped drawing. And I haven't drawn since, and that was like, 
I think I was 11. <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't drawn since then at all. And I would save a fortune if I did, but I, I definitely wouldn't do as good as my artist was, uh, wow. is doing. So, but yeah, I also did clay. So I'm going to try to get that joy back. My uh, goal, which I don't know if I have that ability, but I'm going to work at it is to make an Anubis doll, like uh, the, the clay kind with the fur mm-hmm. and everything and posable and i was looking actually right before i came on here i was looking at the details to do that and the wire armatures and all that stuff so i'm, I'm gonna work on that but i'm gonna bet you about five bucks that however it turns out i'm gonna want to keep it so <laughs> so i might show you all it probably won't be for sale uh after you put your heart and soul on something making like that it's it's kind of hard to give that away yeah. hell buying some of the statues like i usually buy one for myself one for my co-writer and then one you know to sell but there was three times that I've bought just the one and I can't get myself to sell. <laughs> so like I have a skeleton bird statue, which may or may not be in this campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be there with the uh, skeleton plushie, but it's so cool. And I only bought one. So I don't know. I mean, I could get another one made, but I, I don't know. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see if I, if I list that up. So, but they're so addicting. I have an addictive personality and not in like the good way where everyone's yeah, addicted yeah. to me. It's just that everything I want, I'm addicted to all of it. Well, I just came from the hobby shop this past week. I think I just like to spend money on something and it makes me feel like it's done already when it's not. I got like hobby paints and stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to learn to do like the miniatures. Mm-hmm. I have the dip for the, uh, the, the shadowing and the guy was super nice at the store. I'm sure he doesn't get paid enough to answer my questions. We're hoping that that's going to work out. And I'm also going to try to do the um, flocking. It sounds dirtier than it is, but you take like these really tiny cloth material like dots and you kind of make it where it's that fuzzy. We might have a fuzzy Anubis. A flocking Anubis? A flocking Anubis. It sounds horrible. I know. (laughs) That's another thing I'm working. I'm in a different room Mm -hmm. than I was last time. My comic room got flooded. Yeah. Our AC flooded and it seeped underneath the hallway all the way to the next room. We did not know it for 10 days. (laughs) <laughs> so we had to get a jackhammer and rip up the entire floor. And I'm thankful there's no mold. That was all I cared about. So now we have to rebuild that room. So here I am in my, my husband's drum room. But speaking of the drums and stuff, uh, we, we redid our song. I think I had a song last time I was here, right? If not, we have a song. <laughs> if you play the video on the Kickstarter, the background music is the background music of our song. Uh, the lyrics are based on our characters, is written specifically for us. And we just had it remastered. So it'll be on this campaign as well. It'll be a download you can do. And we're also working on a second song about zombies, which will be released with book two. Mm -hmm. So of course, now I have to uh, go with that tradition and have a new song per book. It's something different, that's for sure. I can't recall off the top of my head of anyone that's made a comic book and a song at the same time, except <laughs> except for maybe one other that I that I do recall. He put out a, a complete uh, CD with his comic book, actually. With- so I know somebody else did. We actually uh, shared songs and he had quite a few songs. I don't know if that's the same one, um, but they were awesome. I do want to eventually, like maybe with the box set, we'll release like the CD of the five songs, digital release. Now, right now it's a download, which is super easy. When you download it, you get the instrumental version and the vocal version, uh, which is nice. And we have sold uh, a couple of them. The band is called Permissible Indulgence. They are on Spotify, Instagram, YouTube. I can't spell it. And I told them they shouldn't call it that because I can't spell it. <laughs> yes. Permissible indulgence, which is very fitting because uh, I, do- I indulge in everything probably way too much with the uh, buying of my merch or stuff. I get yelled at all the time in a good way. They're like, how come you're brand new and you have so much merch and you have like a whole entire brand? I was like, well, I wanted it. And now it's tax deductible. <laughs> Best hobby ever. But yeah, I was thinking about that today where I was buying Anubis molds online for resin and uh, an Anubis poster. And I was like, oh, tax deductible. <laughs> so yeah, that'll work. I, and Anubis is super popular. He's going to be in book three a ton more. Right now, he wasn't in the book. You know, I added him to the story while I was doing the scripts. And I had not planned. It was like a last minute thing. Like, I'm like, Anubis would be great here. <laughs> I put him in there. And see, once I saw him drawn, I was like, he is the coolest character <laughs> there is. In book two, it's his time to shine. It's the first time he's in there. He's in like almost every page. And then from then on, he's about two to three pages. In book three, though, we're going to add him in a lot more. And book four and five, he's going to be pretty much a main character with with everybody else because they'll be on the island and he'll be with his hellhound, the croc. He played uh, fetch with a hellhound in issue four. And now croc follows him around with a stick in his mouth in every issue. 
So Anubis is now the Spike of your universe, basically. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's true. Spike was my favorite. <laughs> Spike was everyone's favorite except Joss Whedon. Yeah. Um, that. Even like I loved Angel, but issue uh, issue season five's the best because Spike was in there and he was funny and he's relatable and uh, yeah, I love he guest starred with Cordelia in Supernatural. Oh, nice. Uh, which was awesome. <laughs> they were like witches and they were like destroying things and they were like married and like fighting and stuff. So that was hysterical. I loved, I loved every minute of that. Eventually, it's, um, when I say eventually, it's probably like 10 years I can afford this. I want to license Supernatural and have a crossover where they go on a hunt uh, with our clotters, which is the vampires. I think I talked about the clotters last time, right? Yeah, or did, no? yeah. yeah. So issue six, which just passed, was them destroying the clotters and going after them and and all that stuff. So issue seven is pretty much answering questions that uh, everyone asked during these uh, six past issues. But then, of course, it opens up a can of a hundred more uh, questions. But there's a lot that happens. You know, you find out what's going on. You find out a little bit more about her, about the angelic weapon, a little bit more about the angel and demon. They have a little brief brawl, which causes disaster for the end, which leads into uh, book two. And Anubis is there following behind them with Croc at his <laughs> And his heels and other hellhounds too. But Croc's the one with the broken horn, so you can always pick him out. <laughs> well, I, I know you're going to be back on the show in the future, obviously, for <laughs> sure, too, because you have so much content to share with us, especially when it comes to 100 plus issues. I don't know if I'm going to be alive by the time everything is done, but I, I'll be here sure. as long as I can. So I okay, always want to have you back on for sure. Maybe get your, your co writer as well when she doesn't That's break her arm. Doing. And yeah. Trust me. And everything like that, and, and we'll go from there. Well, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. Chris, as always, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? Of course, where is this amazing Kickstarter campaign and anything else you'd like to promote? Well, the best way to find me is on Kickstarter because we are generally in pre-launch or live. So as soon as our Kickstarter ends, we send in the pre-launch to be approved. It takes longer now than usual, about five days. So if we're not on Kickstarter, then just wait a couple of days and we will be. All you have to do is search Worthy Chaos on Kickstarter. We are the only thing that pops up. Uh, makes it super easy to find us. We are also on Facebook. Facebook on our Facebook group. It's Worthy Chaos Redemption. We also have a business page, Worthy Chaos. You can find me personally, Carissa Grant. I have a pretty large following on there and I love talking to anybody. I'm the kind of person that would get kidnapped in a heartbeat. And then I have Twitter at Worthy underscore Chaos and you can find us there. You can find us on almost any platform if you search Worthy Chaos, but those are the two that I, I am on the most. So, and feel free to always contact me. Anyone new, any new creators can find me and I'll help anyone else make a Kickstarter page or tell you what not to buy for all your merch and wind up like me. But I love to help the community. And it's a super great supportive community. So anyone that's in the small indie community, you know, join our group. You can post your own stuff too, including your Kickstarter pages, your artwork, your commissions, your podcast, anything you want. And we support each other and it's, it's great. So find us on there. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's T-W-O, not the number. Of course, the <laughs> website's been going through an update for, it feels like 10 plus years. So go to our YouTube channel, which is YouTube dot com forward slash tgt media the podcast is back as you can find that at two geeks talking dot podbean dot com or just search for two geeks talking wherever you listen to your podcasts as i say every week everyone has a story to tell it's up to me to help bring that out thanks for listening watching on two geeks talking <laughs>